Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss best practices for data validation tests in Oracle. The first best practice is to set aside a section of your test cases, somewhere towards the bottom, to cover known defects. When? Well, whenever it's appropriate. You have to be able to write a simple SQL validation check, and often it's not possible because you have to do complicated setup and teardown. But when it is possible, you should do this. Why? Because it enables you to gradually automate regression testing and quickly recheck to confirm that defects aren't reintroduced. There are six more powerful best practices that you'll want to be aware of and implement frequently. In the GitHub site, you'll see that you can add how to add a new status of warn and skip and go beyond pass or fail, how to limit to just the recent data, how to ignore fails when they won't be fixed, how to use a single large table scan for performance, it's a really important one, how to use config tables to parameterize your scripts, and how to do test case layout design considerations. The first best practice is test case 62, and it's implementing warns and skips. So what we're doing, we can run this part of the inner query. Let's just do that so you can see what's going on. Execute that. <clears throat> and there we go, we have regions and we have frequencies. And what we're gonna do is go down here and get a fail or a warning. <clears throat> if the region is outside of, let's see, this is region ID one, it's 0.32. So 0.32 is between 10% and 50%, so it's not gonna fail. But if it's a little bit narrower band, 25% to 35%, then we get a warning. 32% is right in the middle. But that gives us a little bit of sensitivity. A fail means it's bad, and a warning means, well, be aware of it, and if it happens occasionally, down here, we're going to look at it and actually really go after it in the final SQL statement. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is say, hey, if there's no data at all, skip the test case. For whatever reason, this is completely blank and it didn't find anything. So then we would skip the test case. If it was really bad and outside the range, then we'd fail it. And if it's not too bad, we get a warrant. So that's how you implement it. And if I were to run it, it should be a pass right now execute the whole thing and it'll roll up to a single pass. Next up is test case 63. And this best practice is how to limit your data and not run it against the entire data set. When you get a table that's giant with millions of rows and wide with lots of columns and certain columns aren't indexed and you don't want to be doing a table scan on that and have a test case like this that takes three, four or five minutes to run. If you're running it every day, really, you just want to run it against the past day or the past two or three days to overlap in case of a holiday. And so what you'll do is toss in a where clause on preferably an index column. So date last updated. If it's indexed, that's great. And we want it to be an Oracle sys date is right now, date and time, minus 30 days. So tacking this on, on the inner query, bye. but anyway, you get the picture. There's no point and retesting the old data over and over and over again if it's not changing. Only test the stuff that changed since the last time you executed your battery of tests. If that's one day, fine. If you want four or five days for an overlap, fine. Test 64 demonstrates the best practice of ignoring bad data. So sometimes you'll have a test case running for weeks or months, it's fine, everything's going great, and then all of a sudden, data will fail. And you notify the person upstream who needs to correct the data and they're like, well, I can't get back to it and fix it and correct it for the next three weeks. Or maybe they'll decide they never want to correct it because it's a minor issue and they're just going to let it be. In those cases, tack on a where clause and use the primary key or something equivalent and just filter those out so they never show up again. So in this case, I wanted to filter out those particular country IDs. So if I run the query, Without it, I get 25 rows, and I tack that on, what do I get, 22? Yep, 22 rows. So it's a handy trick to put a where clause in the appropriate place in your test case and filter out the bad data when you've made a conscious decision that it's okay to do so. Test 65 is a really important best practice. It's one giant table scan, and it's done for performance reasons. Up above and in, in this script, we're at test 65, up above in the prior 60-ish test cases, for purposes of this, these tutorials, I would break out an employee ID test as one test case. And so this was like numeric mins and maxes, and this was multiple numeric fields. Anyway, these were each individual test cases, and each of these took you know a third of a second to run. 
a half of a second to run, a third of a second to run. Each of these was performing its own table scan on a tiny table. Well, if you have 50 test cases, each doing their own table scan, that adds up, especially on big tables. So on big tables, I use this best practice heavily. Here's a better visual. When I go table by table through and build tests up, I do table level row counts. I do a, a t test case for that. I do one or more test cases for keys. And then I do uh, heuristic thresholds and diff checks if necessary. And then I group all of these field checks, all of them in one giant table scan, because instead of having 40 little test cases that are pounding the database with table scans over and over and over, I do one single pass. And it literally, it, it's, it's 30, t if there's 30 test cases, and 30 table scans. Instead, I do one, and it literally is 1 30th the time. So it's an important technique that you can should consider to roll up all of your field level checks. So this table scan lumped everything together, even all those funky characters, carriage turn, line feed, tab, non-breaking space. It looked for all those things in one big pass with 33 rejection codes. Now, so the upside to using a table scan, single pass, rolling all these in, is performance gain. There's a downside because it's a case statement. If you find an error here, that's it. That particular row gets that rejection code and that's it. If three other rejection codes would have triggered, they won't, they can't until you fix this one. And then all of a sudden it'll fail at the next one. And then you fix that and then it'll fail at the next one. So the downside is you don't get nice granular test case fails. Here I'll run it and you can see it just, it executes lightning fast. It's session time, 0.02 seconds. And if I were to go run one of the uh, scripts up above that just like checks this only, it would be 0.02 seconds. So table scans are really nice. Test 66 uses a config table. So let's go open up this config table and you can see the columns as a property name, property value. It's just a bunch of bar cars. If we look at the data, I inserted in, just made up my own properties. I wanted the number of days to look back, 100 and the max number of rows to return five on a fail. So I built this, I could dynamically add as many property names and values as I want. And in my SQL, here's the big block. But what I want to concentrate on and start on is the small block here where I'm looking inside of that test case config where the property name is number of days to look back. Let's execute it. I think it was 100. Yep. So it gets a 100 and that property was varkar the value in the name so i have to cast it as an integer now once i have that integer 100 that's going to be subtracted from sysdate so this is a way to instrument your tests if you have hundreds and hundreds of tests you don't want to hard code 100 or 10 days or five days and then decide oh i want to change it to three days now you want to put that inside of a config table and then in one place data just go change it one time so that's how you parameterize your script. And then if we run the outer here, it's going to take the minus 100 and say how many rows where the date last updated is greater than now minus 100 days ago, 25. And then I have my outer wrappers. If the row count is less than five, fail. If it's greater than five, 25, then it'll be a pass. our pad all that matters is this and what you really need to focus on is the use of a config table and you can use them all over they can be in the where clause you can use them up here in a case you can use them anywhere you want to very handy trick and finally test 67 best practice it's the test case layout design considerations it's a best practice concept there's no SQL code applicable and up until this point in this giant script all the SQL data validation tests have been laid out logically by the validation test type to facilitate learning. They, the record counts were grouped together in rule set one, the numeric field tests were grouped in rule set four, etc. However, when you organize your tests in the real world, when you go to implement these as an automated script, I've found that organizing the test cases by table and field order is the best. You would pick a table and you would run the table level test cases first. You'd do a row count, you'd do anything on foreign keys and unique keys, you'd do anything with heuristic thresholds and or diff checks. So you'd do all those first on the first table. And then you would go through and field by field, or preferably probably in a table scan, 
run a whole bunch of these checks that are field level, numeric values, date values, text values, regular expressions. You'd run all of those against the table. And then you'd go on to the next table and repeat over and over rule sets one through eight. And when you're done with all the tables and fields, the important ones, don't, don't do every table in every field. Do the stuff that's important and gonna, that's valuable to find a bug. When you're done laying out all the tables and fields, then go have a separate script or at the bottom of a large script, start tacking on your defect regression test cases. But that is my recommendations for how to lay out your test cases. And I'm sure you can come up with plenty of approaches that work as well or better for yourself. Just experiment with it and you'll find the best way. To download the SQL scripts in this video, open a browser. In the URL, go to www.github.com slash data research labs, all one word. It pops up, click the SQL scripts link or filter to find it. And scroll down till you see the data validation scripts in the markdown language. Click it and scroll down. I don't have the green plum links built or the SQL server, and I don't have the videos built. They will be, it's just gonna take time. But for our purposes here, let's go to Oracle. Let's look at, sure, let's look at the uh, diff checks. Right click, open in a new tab. And in this case, all the details are collapsed. So expand it, big bunch of SQL that's gonna schema diff and tell you source to target whether the structure's changed. And you can hover over this little clipboard, click that, and voila, you've copied it. And if I were to go over and open up a notepad and paste that in, there it is, there's all the SQL properly formatted. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and subscribe. Also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right.